Welcome to What Went Down, where today we are very, very lucky to be joined by the one and only Finn Balor to look through a few highlights, a few moments of your career and uh, try and remember a few extra moments, a few sort of stories that maybe people haven't heard before. And I, I get the impression there may be some moments here that you can't even remember. No, I, I have a bad habit. I don't know if it's a bad habit or not, but I have a habit of not watching any of my matches or anything that I do. And I would just like to leave it to my memory and normally that does it justice. So this can get a little embarrassing for me to see myself on the TV. So let's I roll it. I remember you talking about that before. Is it, is it basically you, d you don't want to be almost influenced by what you've done before. You don't want to be influenced by the things and just concentrate on the sort of present and the future. Yeah, well, like I can't go back and, and change it. And, you know, if I watch it back, I'm only going to be disappointed because when you're living in that moment with the reaction and the energy and the adrenaline, it's, it feels much better to me than like doing it than it does watching it. So yeah. it's just a big come down to watch it and just go, oh, I, I remember it a lot better yeah. than it's portrayed on the television. <laughs> so, uh, so maybe it's from my perspective, uh, but let's, let's see how bad all this stuff looks. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let's try and jog your memory a little bit because we're going to go back to the, uh, some of the indie days here. I believe this is ICW, so obviously based up in Scotland. And a few of your uh, sort of eccentric outfits and entrances that you've, been, you've become famous for, obviously, in WWE, but something that you were doing long, long ago. So this one here, do you remember? Yeah, this was Darth Maul in Glasgow. The crowd in ICW was always one of my favourite crowds to wrestle in front of. And... Uh, the way we would do it was those shows would actually sell out like with no card announced. So they wouldn't even have to like announce me as like as a superstar that's gonna perform that night. So it was always like a surprise when I would show up. So it was, for me that was always like the best part of wrestling, like coming out as a surprise and uh, just the reaction was always so great. Undoubtedly the best wrestler in the world. What was the inspiration behind this one? Uh, this was Venom, um, this was like s shortly after I started doing the paint, maybe like the second or third like paint job. It's weird because like up until this point in my career I'd spent so much time like focusing on being like a pure wrestler and like the details and the nuances of you know technical wrestling and like trying to focus on that and then like I went a completely opposite direction and wasn't really sure how it was going to be perceived. And like even some of my closest friends said like, oh, you're stupid, like that's gonna be, that's a stupid idea. Like you're gonna look like an idiot. And uh, it was supposed to be like a once off thing in the Tokyo Dome like a couple of years back. And it kind of, I remember after I'd done it, a bunch of indie promoters started messaging me saying, hey, can you do that in Glasgow? Can you do that in London? And it kind of just caught on. I think we've got a pretty iconic one here. This one's mad. This may have been the match in Newcastle where uh, we almost ended up in the river. <laughs> Uh, if, if my memory serves me correct, it was against Jack Jester and we fought out through the crowd and like he whipped me into the fire exit and we flew out at the fire exit and the building was right on the docks and uh, we were kind of jostling for position on the, on the dock side trying to get each other <laughs> into the river but thankfully uh, we stayed dry that night, yeah. And then down in London, this is another one of the famous ones before you were in WWE. Yeah, this, this was a great day I remember um, three of my best friends from Ireland we all flew over to London and I think we only landed in in Gatwick at about three o'clock so by the time we got to the building it was about five and then just put the paint on real quick and went out on the match against someone who I'd known for like since I started wrestling like Zack Sabre Jr we've kind of came up together and uh, it was just such a great night with the energy in the building the person I was in the ring with you know some of my best friends there as well had a couple of drinks afterwards as well. I remember that was a good night. Coming up next, the uh, the NXT uh, debut. How did you feel this was going to go when you came out this night? New name, of course, because you've been Fogel Devitt, you've been Prince Devitt, and now you had to pick this new name, new personality, new everything coming out in NXT, this whole new world where you, you can't assume ever with WWE, can you, that people know who you are. So you have to yeah. do everything from start. Yeah, I remember um, speaking to Scott Hall before this debut and uh, he gave me some of the best advice I'd ever received. And he said, uh, you can't rely on what you've done before. You're not over. You got to go back into get over mode. And that was pretty much like how I approached uh, my NXT 
run was like, you know, don't take it for granted that the people know who you are. Even though in that arena, most of the people did because it was a very smart audience and they would be, you know, in the, in the, in the venue every week. But like definitely the people on television didn't know who, who I was. So uh, I had to, you know, educate or re-educate people. It was an amazing time to be part of this. We're about to see the first time you got the demon, uh, got the demon out of his, his lair on NXT. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was an amazing time to be part of NXT, wasn't it? Yeah, and I remember, um, I remember like people being a little pissed off with the fact that I'd signed with WWE. They said, dude, you're not going to be able to like wrestle the way you want. You're not going to be able to do the paint. They're not going to let you do anything that you like to do. They're going to like put you in a box and they're going to make you a leprechaun or some stuff like this, you know. And uh, I remember I was with NXT maybe a month or two and Triple H came up to me and said, tell me about this paint that you do. And uh, you know, a couple of weeks later, it was the, the debut of the Demon. And the presentation of it was absolutely crazy as well. Like it's, I guess it was the first time you'd had that many cameras and, and sort of spots to hit while doing everything, right? I, uh, so the cameramen that were working that night were still mostly the same guys that are with us today. And like we'll still joke about how many rehearsals we had to do. The night before, we actually had to go in and rehearse that entrance. I think we'd done about 42 takes to try and get like all the different camera shots. And it wasn't necessarily for me, it was more for the lighting and, you know, to make sure they were getting the camera shots they wanted. But uh, I remember we were all exhausted, like the night before the match. But uh, it was definitely uh, it was definitely worth uh, the investment in time. On the 40 second take, are you starting to think, you know, when, when you do something in a number of times, all of a sudden you're like, this is ridiculous. What am I doing? On the 40 second take, what were you thinking? Ah, uh, it's I, I look back now and I go, the whole thing is ridiculous because like, it's completely changed and evolved like ev every time. And uh, I was still kind of getting the feel for the music and, and uh, the way this character was, you know, kind of moving. Uh, because before I hadn't really moved different or, you know, wrestled very differently uh, with the paint and we were trying to like create this new character here. So it, it was and still is a learning experience for me. And the fact that we do it less often now is also like um i don't want to say it's a it's a hindrance but i almost forget how the demon moves and how he reacts to things and uh you know it'll be about five minutes into the match as the demon i go ah oh, now i remember you know <laughs> so it's uh, it really does you know change how i move and how, how i feel when i'm out there Winning the NXT, uh, NXT title in Japan, uh, somewhere so special for you in your career, somewhere so important to why you wrestle and how you wrestle. How incredible was this moment? Yeah, uh, it's the, that was one of the most full circle moments that I've had in my career because uh, not only was it in Japan, but it was in Ryogoku, which was Sumo Arena, where we would wrestle with New Japan quite a lot. And I actually had my final match for New Japan uh, in that arena, uh, in the paint also. Uh, against Taguchi and uh, when I left that night I figured you know I may never return here ever again and uh, I think it was maybe almost a year to the day that uh, I returned and you know someone uh, I was in the ring against Kevin Owens who's someone who I didn't know very well going into NXT apart from like you know on the indie circuit but um, we bonded uh, over kind of the journey we were making, you know, adapting to life in NXT, in WWE, in the USA. And, uh, and uh, to get to share the ring with him that night was very cool too. An even more special moment for me, and I don't know if you have it on the reel here, is that uh, when I actually lost the title against Samoa Joe, and we done that on a house show, and that was something that was so rare. Uh, and I remember like the sheer surprise and shock of the people in the front row that just couldn't believe what they had witnessed on a house show that, you know, after I think it was like 200 and something days of being champion and, you know, Joe pins, you know, the champ on a house show in Lowell, not actually far from here, about an hour's drive from here. And then it was a, that was a special night. That, that for me is probably the coolest moment of my career, I think. Really? Yeah, just the sheer um, shock and then joy you know, of the, of the fans, like having Joe as champ, 
you know, someone who'd had such a long career and, you know, really paid his dues and uh, had become such an integral part of NXT. And then for me, someone who I'd learned so much from, uh, you know, not only in NXT, but before that. Uh, and, you know, we obviously have a very close relationship as well. So um, that, that was one of my favorite nights of my career. Talking about like full circle moments, this is the other full circle moment in my career. Like going back to London, where like you know I had trained about an hour from there for like six years, and like never really thought like I'd be performing in, in Wembley, and uh, that was a cool night. I had my family front row, and you know some of my friends travelled over, and then that whole week run was the first like NXT UK tour, and it was just fire every single night. Like the crowds were just incredible, and normally. You know, you go into the end of a run, like a seven night straight, like pretty beat up and sore, but just the adrenaline and the, the energy from like the whole crew was just incredible. Let's talk about the call up to Raw then from NXT. I don't know if you remember this little event. You're there just in the corner, see bottom right, <laughs> behind the Leah there. Oh looking yeah. Looking very yeah, humble, yeah, looking yeah. very meek and modest. <laughs> How much of you was expecting this at the time? Were you, did you sort of know that it was going to happen? Or? Uh, I'd heard whispers, but nothing was uh, nothing was confirmed. Or I'm so surprised they kept that completely quiet. Yeah, yeah, they 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 kayfabed, as they say, everybody. And uh, I don't know if it was like a test or a rib or whatever, but I remember like one of the one of the producers coming to me and saying, oh, "I think you're going to be like draft pick number one." I yeah. said, oh, "I don't think so," but like <laughs> you know. But then it like got in in, in my head, like, "Oh, maybe I am going to be draft pick number one," and then I wasn't. And I was like, oh, you know, <laughs> maybe I'm not getting picked at all. But I guess he meant like round one. Yeah. So uh, it was just like lost in translation a little bit. But yeah, it was that was a cool night. So that obviously led fairly soon into this the Universal Championship match at SummerSlam, which I guess has very mixed feelings for you. Uh, I wouldn't say mixed. Um, I believe it's obviously it's been a huge point in my career because we're still talking about it till this day and I still get asked about it all the time mm. uh, but you know I learned a lot uh, for myself you know I made it to the mountaintop which you know for so many people uh, is impossible or so many people told me it was impossible and mm. um, so for me it was like an achievement and you know a crowning moment obviously like the injury kind of I don't want to say soured it but you know it changed the you know what was going to happen in, in the next couple of months but from the injury i learned and i grew and uh, it was the first kind of moment that i'd had in you know 16 years to kind of like sit and like assess what i had done and how far i'd come since i'd started so uh, i tried to try to look at the the positives with that injury i have to relinquish this title but rest assured But rest assured that when I am healthy and when I am fit and when I am ready, I will be back. And this title is the first thing that I'm coming for. Must have been a strange feeling this night. Yeah, I don't really have much memory of this at all. And there wasn't any like planning that went into it. Like obviously like I had a couple of lines that I wanted to get out. But like I even remember like Mick Foley lifting my arm and thinking like, oh, that's weird. Like, we hadn't even spoken about this or anything, and I didn't know Stephanie was going to be in the ring. Like when I went out there, Stephanie was in the ring. Um, but this day was such a blur because I went from the night before at SummerSlam straight to the to the hotel, and we had to get up like at 6 a.m. to go and do media. So I hadn't really slept because of the adrenaline and the injury and everything. So at 6 a.m. we went and done media, Good Morning America, and from there we went straight to the hospital, and from the hospital we went straight to the show. So like I hadn't really been to bed like yeah. since you know, the Saturday night. Uh, so that was kind of, that was kind of a blur. Oh no! That was stopped by Bauer. Down goes Shea. Oh, Let's talk about this Royal Rumble then. Entered number two, lasted 57 minutes. Didn't get to win. Yeah. Thanks to a certain John Cena. I know, yeah. That, that old sneaky fella. Um, <laughs> uh, what does a 57 minute match feel like? Uh, particularly one involving 29 other people. Yeah, it was fine. I remember thinking like I could go for a little longer. Uh, it was, it definitely felt like there was 
uh, something was achieved that night, you know? Like some nights you go out there and uh, like you just do your job and it's, you know, A, B, C, D and then you're done. Uh, that there was a lot of kind of working on the fly or, you know, just having to improvise a lot and uh, really be in the moment and enjoy it. And uh, I really did and I would love another another shot at maybe cracking the one hour mark in the rumble. That's uh, I was a little bit disappointed actually to be honest that I got I think it was like fifty seven minutes, like fifty eight seconds or something. Because how much do you know at that point? Do you are you like, yeah, this feels like fifty six minutes. Oh I'd no I'd no idea, but when yeah. I came back someone told me, Oh good job, you almost lasted an hour and I was like, almost fuck I thought it felt like a little <laughs> bit longer than that. But, um, <laughs> right, let's look at your first uh, WrestleMania entrance in New Orleans. This one Sporting a symbol that's, that clearly means a lot to you, the, uh, the rainbow colours, the LGBTQ plus community. Amazing to be able to make and, and be given the opportunity to make a statement like this. Yeah. I remember in the build up to Mania, I'd been asked uh, a lot, like, are you going to do the demon? Are we going to do the demon? How are we going to do this? And uh, I remember having this idea to do this. And uh, a lot of people were kind of like, oh, you got to definitely do the demon. It's WrestleMania. It's your first WrestleMania. You got to do that entrance. I remember thinking, like, I think I got something that's cooler and like that's more important, to, like, and like to use the platform as a, as a voice for for change. And then it was about three weeks before Mania, and uh, I brought it to Hunter and Stephanie, and they jumped on it straight away and said, "100 percent, you can do that." Mm -hmm. And uh, they helped me uh, get in touch with the LGBT uh, plus community in uh, in New Orleans, and they were actually members of the community from there. Uh, they weren't like extras or anything like that. It was uh, it was legit, like having them up on stage, and uh, it obviously uh, for me that was like a more important moment than any demon mm. entrance could have ever been. So, John Cena, this little moment, uh, I believe it's on Raw. What a, I mean, the biggest star that's come out of WWE in the last twenty years, right? In in, in certainly his generation, the biggest star there is. Uh, what was this this moment like? And I think afterwards there's a there's a handshake between you guys where he kind of gives you some respect. And I know that it almost came in a time when you needed a bit of a boost. Um, I honestly don't really remember. Um, but I will say that it was always a pleasure working with John, and uh, it was a huge learning experience because he approaches the business completely different than anyone else. And uh, you talk about, and I mean this with the greatest respect that I like focus so much on trying to be this most pure technical wrestler and work on the fundamentals and John kind of goes the complete opposite direction and he's more worried about or concerned about interacting with the crowd and listening to the crowd in that moment and uh, I learned a lot from working with John and uh, I'm, I'm very very grateful for that. The return to NXT, a, a little change of look, I think there's a shaved head there yeah. and uh, back, back into the yeah. NXT arena. It's um, I feel like at this time, you'd been out a little while, hadn't you? And, and sort of, I didn't have any creative direction on the main roster and then came back here and it was like you kind of got rid of the demon thing and you were just like, right, Prince Bella, now I'm, now I'm me again. Yeah. How, how was this, uh, this run? Uh, this was super enjoyable for me. Um, obviously getting to work so closely again with Triple H uh, and then Sean had come in as well and been involved in NXT at that time. Um, I just needed a change. I felt like I'd kind of like, I don't want to say I was going through the motions in, on Raw, but I was kind of like, I'd plateaued as to like what I was doing in the ring and I was kind of doing the same stuff all the time. And uh, I'd asked for like a little time off because I had a couple like niggling injuries and stuff and I wanted to go get married. And uh, Hunter said, well, how about you come to NXT? We'd love to have you on NXT. They're, we're going live on, I think it was USA at the time. It was the first time they were going to do live TV. As you said, we could use you down there, it would be great. And I said, sign me up. So uh, that was that was kind of a... Uh, and the, the idea was just to be three months, uh, kind of like, you know, refresh of the character and then go back to Raw. And it ended up, I think, being almost two years. And uh, the way the kind of cookies crumbled. But uh, it, was a, it was a fun time. And for me, it kind of... Uh, within a couple months, uh, the element of the fans got taken out of NXT mm -hmm. and it actually allowed me to return to wrestle to the way I like to wrestle, which was the details and the nuances of actually technical wrestling and not performing, you know, as we were saying a couple of minutes ago about like for the audience and like 
working for the reaction or the the cadence of the match that they understand, uh, and like really just like focusing on like you know traditional uh, mat wrestling and uh, something that like I really really enjoyed and it was a period that I look back on very fondly. Mm. A guy that doesn't get enough credit in NXT is Matt Bloom, mm -hmm. uh, the head coach of NXT, and you know obviously he wrestled uh, all over the world with WWE in Japan and Mexico and everywhere, but um, he's someone who's uh, I worked very closely with on my in-ring work uh, in that run in NXT and uh, someone who helped me a lot, so I give him a lot of credit. Do you still feel like you're improving and learning and, and getting every Every day, every day. And that's partly why I don't like watching the matches back because like a match from four years ago, I'm a completely different person, I'm a completely different athlete, uh, I'm a different performer and like for me it's just like it's it's not how I want to portray myself today. Uh, so like I feel like if you're not grown and you're not uh, like if you're content with how your match was last year, like I don't I feel like you're not growing and uh, I want to keep growing. Let's talk about now then. Let's talk about the present and Judgment Day uh, and, and something very different from what you've done before. It's it's like you've completely shed the the demon. You went back to the Prince, and then now you've got this whole new thing and a whole new team. How's this been for you? This has been fun. This and this moment, fun. and this moment being announced. I've never actually watched this back at all. This was such a, a weird night because I remember it was like 7.55 p.m. and we're going live at 8, 8 o'clock. And I knock on Vince McMahon's office and uh, I go in there and I say, uh, sir, have you got a minute? And he looks up from his papers and he goes, is it about tonight? I said, yeah. It's, it's about tonight, it's about the heel turn. He goes, oh, come in. So like, I just like wanted some direction as to like, hey, am I going out there like in the suit, like in the Judgment Day colors, or am I going out as Finn? Am I going out to music? Am I, what way are we doing it? And he's like, oh, you just go out as Finn and then do the segment. I was like, oh, well, okay, that's, <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> but, uh, so like there wasn't really much thought or planning went into it, and, uh, but it definitely, uh, it definitely made an impact. And I feel like this, this was the version of Finn that I wanted to do in NXT. Uh, and it just, we couldn't do it because the crowd, you know, had been too attached to me from the, the previous run. And then the crowd got completely taken out of it. So there was no chance to even be a heel to get like a heel reaction. So uh, this is kind of what I went back to NXT to do. And, you know, three years later, I get to do it properly. You've got some young members of Judgment Day as well as Damien Priest, he's been, he's been around the Indies for years, but is new to the newish to the WWE roster. Yeah. To have them around you, how's that been? Yeah, it's been great. Um, yeah, Priest is someone who I wasn't very familiar with, and then uh, we wrestled in NXT, and like kind of like a friendship forged in in uh, in war, you know. <laughs> and uh, you know, Rhea's obviously got this like element of. You know, cool, that's kind of like undefinable. And then uh, you know, recently Dominic has just came into uh, his completely own, like you know, his own. I, I don't know how you even explain it, but it's almost like uh, he's like transcending what his his father has done, you know, already, you know, uh, with with the reactions that he's getting. Um, but so many people helped me in my career that I feel like it's only it's only uh, fair to to pay that forward to to these guys. Mm. Yeah. Unless it's Edge, in which case, <laughs> in which case he's beat <laughs> <laughs> All right then, Finn, it's been a pleasure to look through some of those moments with you. Time for a cheesy ending, you're going to enjoy this. Yep. Finn Balor, that was What Went Down. It's the name of the show. <laughs>